This series is one of the worst shows ever created, and it was made by a group of woefully untalented writers who had no actual interest in telling a good story, but rather decided to use this series as a vehicle to push their own stupid agenda that nobody was interested in watching. And this finale is probably the best way that the series could have ended. Now, it doesn't mean that it fixes anything or that it even ends in a satisfying way, but rather that it creates a situation that is so awful and so insulting to the audience that it perfectly encapsulates the current state of Disney and Hollywood in general. It's full of laughably bad CGI, a barely non-existent plot, it's boring, it's lazy, it's poorly written, poorly acted, and focuses entirely on the pandering to woke weirdos, and let's not forget that it also has the destruction of several longtime fan favorite characters. It is a failure in every conceivable way. She-Hulk is bad, episode 9. We open with a scene-for-scene -scene recreation of the intro from the old Incredible Hulk TV series. The difference being is that old Incredible Hulk TV show was actually popular and fun to watch, and She-Hulk is not. During the fake intro, the show creators decided to go the Lou Ferrigno route and actually used a tall actress who was painted green to represent She-Hulk. And ironically enough, it probably looks better than the actual CGI She-Hulk that we've been getting in this series. Why don't I just wear a sign that says, too ugly to live? After that's done, we see Jen being held in the exact same cell that was used for Blonsky. Black Mallory and some of the others show up, and Jen immediately starts talking about how they need to prosecute all the men who leaked her information. Black Mallory tells her to forget it, because she's in a lot of trouble. When Shrek broke the large TV screen, everybody freaked out, and now they're treating her as if she's some sort of unhinged, dangerous monster. While it's true that Jen does need to be held accountable for the things that she's done, and we'll talk about this later, trust me, I do think it's kind of absurd that she's able to just get away scot-free with destroying a parking garage and that guy's new car, whereas the line that can't be crossed is apparently breaking the TV screens. Most illogical. Also, the idea that she is now some uncontrollable monster is ridiculous. The same was held true for the Incredible Hulk 10 years ago, but in more recent times, the Incredible Hulk is very well regarded by the population in general, and most will consider him to be a hero. But in order for this idiotic plot to continue, the show needs to pretend that Jen is somehow at risk of rampaging through the city. I'm afraid there's been a misunderstanding. Black Mallory says that they reached a plea deal that will allow Jen to be released today, but she has to wear one of those stupid inhibitor devices for the rest of her life, and she's never allowed to turn into Shrek again. Once more, this is grossly unconstitutional. Even if superpowers became a thing tomorrow, that would not be allowed within the Constitution, and it, it's just dumb that the show creators are trying to get away with it. Of course, this once again proves that Disney hiring people based on diversity points instead of actual talent and understanding of the law when they're trying to make a legal show probably was a bad idea. <sighs> This results in Jen losing her job, and somehow it also translates into her losing her house, which doesn't make any sense, because Jen was the kind of poster child for a very high-profile law firm and was probably making a very, very large amount of money. So there is simply no way that she would immediately lose her house. Are you trying to tell us that she had absolutely no money saved up whatsoever and that she was living check to check on what it was probably a six-figure salary that doesn't make any sense i mean i know that jen is an alcoholic but even she probably can't spend all that money on booze you're on this council but we do not grant you the rank of master regardless she ends up moving back into her parents house and adding to this she's followed around by the media everywhere she goes now with her copious amounts of free time Jen decides that she's going to try to track down the intelligentsia who were responsible for ruining her life. Well, I would say partially responsible. Jen did a pretty good job of ruining her own life as well. Boom. Roasted. She has a big board set up with all the information that she's collected, and she's frustrated because the security is very strong on the website, and it's also owned by a bunch of shell companies overseas, making it difficult to track down who actually owns it. But the secretary says that Jen shouldn't worry because these guys are going to slip up because the website is run by a, quote, bunch of dumb guys. You're a stupid man! 
man! A stupid, stupid man! The amount of man-hating projection by the writers in this series has been truly impressive thus far, but trust me, we're just getting started. Later on, Jen is in her room by herself talking to the audience when she comes to the realization that the She-Hulk series isn't even a reluctant superhero story, she's just getting screwed over. Which couldn't possibly be further from the truth. As I've already pointed out numerous times already, the character of Jen is an absolute piece of shit. She attacks and insults others who are just trying to help her. She takes advantage of everyone she possibly can, including family and friends. She expects to be rewarded and treated special simply because she's a woman. Jen is a hateful, narcissistic, unlikable, and overall awful human being, and funny enough, seems to be a one-to-one -one self insert of the writers themselves. The truth is, the only people who actually got screwed over were the fans of the comic book version of She-Hulk, who went into this wanting to see an accurate depiction of the character that they enjoy, and instead, the writers handed them a pile of dog shit while also telling them they were sexist for not liking it. Geez, do you know what projection is? Continuing, Jen decides that she needs a break from everything and she's gonna go and try to stay with Blonsky for a little while at his resort. Meanwhile, the secretary obtained an embarrassing video of Jen from her mother and she's going to use it to try to infiltrate the intelligentsia. What she does is she uploads it to the website and then tries to curry favor using that as the way to get in. The Hulk King messages her about five seconds after she uploads it and invites her to a secret meeting of the intelligentsia. However, the secretary quickly realizes that since she's a woman, she can't actually show up herself and she needs to get help from that office guy. But don't worry, it gets worse. Remember how I said Jen's a piece of shit? Well, this is a great example of it because she arrives at the resort and is given a guest room completely free of charge because remember, Jen lost her job, she lost her house, she doesn't have any money, somehow, maybe she spent it all on booze, whatever. Anyways, she goes to the resort and Blonsky gives her this luxurious guest room completely free of charge. And what's the first thing that she does when she's in the guest room? She insults Blonsky. Now, it may then come as a surprise, to the most naive among us, anyway. We see Jen laying down on her bed reading a book of poems that was written by Blonsky, and after only a few pages, she throws it down on the bed and says that the book sucks. Now, even if this is true, which it probably is, why would she do that? Like, why? What kind of ungrateful attitude do you have? Like, yes, okay, maybe the book isn't the greatest, maybe it's terrible, whatever, it doesn't matter, why are you being such an asshole about it? Here she is sitting in a very luxurious guest room on a resort where she has access to all of the amenities, the food, the activities, everything, completely free of charge, and yet she's still insulting the man who is helping her. What the fuck is wrong with this bitch? The secretary and office guy arrive at the secret meeting and it just so happens to be at Blonsky's resort, which of course is very convenient to the plot. Office guy has an earpiece so he can listen to the secretary because apparently he's too stupid to do anything on his own. When he goes inside, there's a bunch of guys complaining about Marvel characters that are woman. Oh, not this again. The show creators desperately want to portray all of the stuff that these men are saying as really bad and sexist. The problem is, is that none of what they're saying is actually bad or sexist. One guy says that Lady Thor is terrible, which is objectively true. Jane Foster as Thor is an absolute awful character. She had one of the lowest selling comics in Marvel history, and the Thor Love and Thunder movie was complete dog shit, and it failed in the box office. Then the office guy, trying to make himself fit in, says, uh, females, am I right? And of course, the other guys agree with him, and all of this is unbelievably fucking cringe. Oh, you can smell the shit from five miles away. Someone recognizes him, and it turns out to be the weird guy who kept trying to go out on a date with She-Hulk. He admits to being King Hulk, the guy who owns the website and is in charge of the entire organization. This weird guy then goes on a little rant where he says a bunch of things about She-Hulk, and the guys around him are all agreeing. Once more, the show creators are desperately trying to portray all of this as being bad and sexist, but again, it's not. There are three main things that he says. The first is that She-Hulk isn't as strong as the Hulk. This is objectively true. There's not even a question about this. Second, that She-Hulk isn't as smart as the Hulk. Again, this is true. In the show, Jen is dumb as a box of rocks, but in the comics, Jen is actually a fairly intelligent character, 
but she still doesn't hold a candle to Bruce Banner, who is a super genius. The fact of the matter is, is he's like one of the most intelligent people to have ever existed in all of Marvel Comics. So no, Jen is not as smart as him. And again, this is objectively true. A very thorough investigation that has found no evidence of foul play. However, then the writers decide to create a gigantic straw man, because one of the things that woke weirdos hate is when people receive something based on merit instead of a diversity checklist. Whether it's a job or a promotion, the idea that the best and most qualified person should get it is anathema to woke weirdos who would rather have all of the good rewards go to people based solely on how many diversity boxes they can check off. This is exactly how the writers on this show got their jobs, after all. It wasn't because they were talented, it was because they checked off the right diversity boxes. Someone as unqualified as I am would ever be nominated for anything so important. So that leads to the third thing the weird guy says, that superpowers should go to the person best suited for the job. The show creators want to pretend as if this is some sort of big gotcha moment and it depicts anyone who believes in merit over diversity as some sort of alt-right woman hater. But there are a couple of problems with what the writers are trying to do, you know, beyond their obvious stupidity. Whether it's Marvel, DC, or something else, the overwhelming majority of people who have some sort of superpower didn't actually get it through any kind of decision-making process, but rather through sheer random chance. However, there are a few cases where a superpower is deliberately given to a person, and this is usually done based on merit. This exact situation is why Steve Rogers became Captain America. There were a bunch of people that were trying out for the position, but he was by far the most qualified and the best choice. Giving any kind of significant responsibility, or in this case powers, based on merit, will always be a better option than giving it based on diversity checkboxes or sheer random chance. Meanwhile, Jen runs into one of the other people at the resort and she asks where she can find Blonsky because she wants to talk to him. The other guy says that he has some sort of special event going on, so Jen decides to head on over. Back at the meeting, the Hulk King introduces the special guest, which very predictably turns out to be Blonsky in his abomination form. Moments later, Jen walks through the door and she sees the abomination. Blonsky turns back into his normal form and he tries to convince Jen that he's not doing anything nefarious and he only does this for the money because speaking engagements pay quite nicely. Office Guy then tells Jen that this is a meeting for the intelligentsia and that the weird guy is the Hulk King. The Hulk King then goes on to explain his whole plan to the entire room. He says that he has some of Jen's blood and he had some scientists work on it and now he can give himself Hulk powers. This creates quite a few problems for the MCU in general. During the awful Falcon and Winter Soldier series, a whole bunch of characters were given Super Soldier Serum, which, you know, kind of devalued that whole thing. And now you have a very easy way to create more Hulks, which is even worse. Think about it for a second. If there was a genuine threat to the planet, then Jen could just donate some blood and create a whole bunch of Hulks. Oh no, there's another big armada of aliens that are going to attack the planet. Don't worry, we'll just make an army of hulks from Jen's blood. Oh no, there's a bunch of demons from another dimension that are invading. Don't worry, we'll just make an army of hulks from Jen's blood. Do you see how ridiculous it becomes when you allow for something like this to occur? What a story! Of course, later on in the episode, this problem will be solved in the dumbest way possible. And speaking of things that are dumb, Titania smashes through one of the walls seemingly out of nowhere. This is followed moments later by the Incredible Hulk arriving as well to fight with the Abomination. However, it should be noted that before this fight starts, Abomination doesn't actually want to fight the Hulk, and he even goes out of his way to pick up Jen and to move her safely off to the side. The Abomination actually puts himself in the way in order to protect Jen, who is still in her normal 4 out of 10 on a good day form. And this is really important and it's going to be brought up later. During all of this nonsense, Jen has been breaking the fourth wall and complaining that this is not how the series was supposed to end. The show then seemingly cuts back to the Disney Plus main menu, with Jen still complaining in the background, and we hear her say, Hang on, I'm just going to break this inhibitor real quick. It's very convenient. Very convenient. The first thing I have to ask is how did she even break it? Because she can't change into Shrek when she has it on, so how does she actually have the strength to break it? And secondly, as I mentioned in the previous video, if it's that easy to just break off and then use your powers, then 
Why even have the inhibitor at all? It seems to be completely and utterly worthless. It is a tale told by an idiot. Regardless, Jen does in fact break it, and then she turns into Shrek, and then she breaks through the Disney Plus menu screen. She is quite literally breaking the fourth wall of the show, but don't worry, it gets worse. It's quite hard to put into words just how unbelievably, mind-numbingly, fucking pathetic the rest of this episode is going to be. She manages to enter one of the other shows, which takes her directly to the Marvel studio. So now we have Shrek, who is supposed to be walking around in the quote-unquote real world. She finds her way to the She-Hulk writer's room and begins complaining about how the episode is going. She says that the villain stealing blood to give himself superpowers is unoriginal and stupid, but the writers say that there are certain things that are expected to happen, and this is what Kevin wanted. The Kevin that they're hinting at is supposed to lead the audience to believe that it's going to be Kevin Feige, the guy that's in charge of Marvel at Disney. But as we'll find out in a few minutes, it's actually even dumber than that. Mm. This is terrible. Also, I want to point out that when Shrek goes into the writer's room, one of the writers is talking about what they should do for season two of She-Hulk. Season two of She-Hulk. <laughs> Considering how much of an absolute dumpster fire the show turned out to be, I think it's pretty hilarious that the writers were so delusional that they would even consider thinking about a season two. Though, in fairness, Disney is run by a bunch of retards who gave the go-ahead for this series to begin with, so to be perfectly honest, it's not out of the realm of possibility that this trash heap would actually get a second season. Oh boy. Give me some of the pain and let me die. Jen continues moving through the Marvel building, and she ends up beating up a bunch of security guards along the way. She even smashes this one dude's head into the wall, probably giving him a pretty serious concussion. Remember that these security guards are trying to protect the building and the people inside from Jen. Jen is the one who is being aggressive here. She is the one that is being hostile. And yet here she is attacking a bunch of innocent people just so she can get her way. Remember, She-Hulk is supposed to be the hero of this series, and yet, for some reason, she continually acts like the villain. Have you ever considered that we may be on the wrong side? She did this not only attacking the security guards, but she also destroyed the parking garage, she also threw and destroyed that guy's car. I mean, every opportunity, Jen is behaving like a villain rather than a hero. Finally, she reaches the room with Kevin, and it's not actually Kevin Feige. Instead, it's a robot named Kevin, and his name is an acronym for a bunch of nonsense that I couldn't possibly give two shits about. The robot then says, Oh, I'm sorry, were you expecting a man? Get it? Because everyone thought it was going to be Kevin Feige, but it's actually a robot that's named Kevin. Isn't that funny? Everyone should laugh. Kevin then says that he's the most advanced machine in the world for entertainment and creates near-perfect products. He says that, <laughs> that he creates near-perfect products. Near-perfect products. You know, like all the ones in Phase 4, the movies that uh, lost money, and the Disney Plus shows that have hilariously low viewership. He creates, he creates near-perfect products, everybody. Near perfect products. Oh my god, it's it's like, I don't know, do you, do you laugh or do you cry? But don't worry, it gets worse. The way that all of the storylines get wrapped up in this awful series is because Jen then proceeds to spend several minutes complaining to Kevin about all the things that she didn't like. Jen quite literally solves the ending of the show by pitching a fit like a Karen. That is the stupidest story I ever heard. And of course, Kevin, being the beta bitch that he is, gives into all of the demands of the woman. He removes the Hulk power blood from the weird guy, thus solving that problem. He sends the Incredible Hulk back into space. But probably the dumbest resolution to all of this is what happens with Blonsky. Jen says that she wants Blonsky to finally take responsibility for his actions, which doesn't make any fucking sense whatsoever. During this episode, Blonsky did turn into the Abomination, 
but he did so not because he was trying to do evil stuff, he just wanted to get paid as a special guest presenter, and while that may technically be a violation of his parole, it really doesn't matter because that restriction was grossly, grossly unconstitutional anyways. So he was in the right to actually ignore it. Excellent part. But even ignoring all that, he didn't want to fight the Incredible Hulk, and he even got in the way and used his powers to protect Jen. Right here, you can see this. He picks up Jen and moves her to the side, and he makes sure that she is safe. He was actually acting like more of a hero than Jen has through this entire fucking series. Do you see the irony? Not only that, but Jen is a complete hypocritical piece of shit when she says that she wants Blonsky to take responsibility for his actions. Because Jen has gone through this whole series doing all kinds of bad stuff, and she has not once, not once, ever been held responsible for any of the bad things that she has done through this series. Identity-wise, a lot of boxes are checked, which means she's not going to be held accountable at all. Hey, hey, Jen. Hey, hey, don't you think it's a little hypocritical for you to claim that Blonsky needs to take responsibility for his actions, even though you've done far worse in this series and you haven't taken responsibility for any of it? Like when your cousin Bruce was trying to help you, and in response you acted like a bitch, and then even now you still haven't apologized for it? Or when you destroyed the parking garage and possibly could have endangered the lives of everyone who was below you, and then instead of doing the right thing, you just made a joke about it as you walked away? And not to mention that you also destroyed that other guy's brand new car and you didn't take responsibility for that either. And then you tried to kill Daredevil and then you tried to kill Daredevil again and then you tried to kill Daredevil again. Don't you, don't you think you probably should take responsibility for some of those things? Like, also, when you almost killed this guy by slamming his head into the wall and you probably gave him a severe concussion and you also severely injured several other innocent people as they were just trying to protect the others in the building when you were kind of, you know going through it in an aggressive, hostile manner. Don't you think that maybe you should take responsibility for all the shitty things that you've done before you ever try to, you know, claim that someone else might need to take responsibility for their actions? Don't you, don't you think you should probably do that? Hey, hey, Jen. Why are you such a piece of shit? A slut and a moron. But the show creators are not going to hold her responsible because she's a woman, because she checks off some diversity boxes, and because she can't do any wrong. And it's Blonsky who needs to hold up and, and be held responsible for his actions, but not Jen. Don't blame others for your bad decision. Continuing, as the conversation wraps up, Kevin says that Jen is no longer going to have access to Marvel Studios or the Kevin anymore, and then they drop some hints about having a season two, which again, I think is fucking hilarious. But as she's leaving, she also mentions something about what the Hulks do, because Hulks smash things. They smash walls, they smash bad endings, and Jen says that she even smashes Matt Murdock, which is an obvious sexual innuendo joke. Now, this is fine for her to say, but again, if this had been done in the reverse and a male character had said that, oh, he smashes the female character, me too. That would never, ever, ever be allowed, right? It would always be portrayed as something bad and, oh, he's sexist and this and that. But of course, Disney doesn't have any standards if they don't have double standards. The scene then transitions back to the resort, but instead of being at nighttime, now it's day for some reason. 
The Hulk King, Blonsky, and the other guys are being arrested. As Blonsky is being taken away, he talks about how he needs to accept responsibility for his action, and Jen makes some sort of joke at his expense. She doesn't even thank him for saving her life earlier. Technically, those events have been retconned out of the show, but it just once again proves that Jen is a complete and utter piece of shit. Real quick, just go fuck yourself. Suddenly, Daredevil just drops out of the sky a few feet away from Jen because they wanted the cameo, although this makes absolutely no sense because if it was in the city, then yeah, he could have been up on top of a tall building or something and worked his way down, but there's only the one building and there's no way for him to have possibly kind of gotten over here. So basically, they just make Daredevil magically appear because they wanted the cameo and it's really stupid. The show then moves over to a closing epilogue type situation with Jen and her family at a cookout. Matt Murdock is also there because they need to squeeze every bit of that cameo as they possibly can. And I want to reiterate that there is absolutely no way that Matt Murdock would ever date at best, 4 out of 10 on a good day, Jen. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, and you're ugly. But don't worry, it gets worse. And I know you might be thinking, hang on a second, we're basically in the final scene of the last episode of the series. What else could they possibly screw up? And also, what we've already seen was some of the worst content ever made for the MCU. So what is there left? Well, they decided to introduce a significant and very important character from one of Incredible Hulk's storylines without us actually ever getting to see that Incredible Hulk storyline. We are introduced to whatever the fuck this is supposed to be. No! Oh, please, God, no! This laughable, pathetic monstrosity is supposed to be the son of the Incredible Hulk. His name is Scar, except... It doesn't look like him at all, not even in the slightest. He looks like he has one of those haircuts where he walked into a barber shop and the barber's like, hey, what kind of hairstyle do you want? And he's like, eh, just fuck it up as much as possible. And the barber says, no problem, I know just the thing. How embarrassing. I'm not really sure what more I can say about this. Yeah, I know the CGI in this show has been awful, but holy shit, this is another level. The final regular scene of the episode is some point in the near future when Jen is walking into the courthouse as Shrek. She's stopped by a reporter who asks what she's planning to do, and Jen responds by saying that anyone who attacks, harasses, or harms another person, Jen is going to go after them, and she says that she'll do it as both Jen and the She-Hulk. The lack of self-awareness here is quite impressive. Perhaps the first person that Jen should try to stop from attacking and harassing and harming others would be herself. Finally, we get a post credit scene where Wong shows up at the prison and creates a portal for Blonsky to escape, and it appears that he's going to be living indefinitely at Kamertaj. Now, wasn't the show trying to set up the situation where Blonsky had accepted responsibility for his actions and that he was going to willingly stay in the prison? So how exactly does this fit in with that? Now, we as the audience know that Blonsky didn't do anything wrong and he shouldn't be punished, and if anything, Jen is the one who's actually behaving like a villain, but it doesn't make any sense with what the show is doing. Like, they make it so that he says he wants to accept responsibility for his actions and he willingly goes back to prison only to get broken out by Wong and escape 10 minutes later. Like, wh what, are you, what are you even doing? A character's actions must flow inexorably from his or her established traits. Even with the fact that the people running Disney are fucking morons, it's still genuinely hard to believe that they gave the go-ahead on this awful series. But what you might find more interesting is apparently this wasn't even the original version. The She-Hulk series had to go into extensive rewrites and do reshoots because the first couple versions that they came up with were even worse than this. I've actually heard that this show was supposed to come out before the Miss Marvel show, but it was so bad and so awful they had to do all kinds of redos on a lot of the content in this series in order to make it somewhat even the slightest bit barely watchable and even then we ended up with this <sighs> but as bad as this series has been it doesn't appear that disney is actually going to learn from it i fully expect that the mcu is going to continue sliding further and further downhill but thankfully that's the end of season one Take your shots at the end.
inside of me I'm gonna make it to the top, leave a legacy If I got something to say, you better let me speak Turn it up a new degree, bitch, you ain't seen anything I pop off with the new rock Electronic, blow the sonic roof up I'm too honest when I take a few shots They're too toxic, need to take the new song